Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Get Techy. My name is Andrew and you're going to start seeing me more frequently here on the channel. Lucky for all of you, seeing as how I'm at least twice as good looking as Poe. Today, we're going to take a look at the updated version of NZXT's Kraken GPU liquid cooling bracket. Now, if you follow the channel since its inception last year, you will know that the original Kraken G10 starred in our very first video. We use the G10 to liquid cool our EVGA GTX 1080 for the win edition, and we saw some very favorable results in regards to temperature, fan noise, and average clock speed. Fast forward seven months, and here we have NZXT's newest GPU liquid cooling bracket, the Kraken G12. According to NZXT, it features a new design that lends itself to an easier installation process versus its older brother and boasts compatibility with over 30 liquid coolers and 40 different GPUs. The G12 sports a newer design that in our opinion is more aesthetically pleasing, although we are a bit disappointed that it's currently only offered in matte white or matte black. There is no blue or red color option at this time unless they are planning to announce that at a later date. Just as with the G10, Included in this kit is a 92 millimeter DC fan running at 1500 RPMs, but sorry, there's still no PWM controls. The appearance of the fan is quite similar, although the new one is rocking a stealthy all black look as opposed to the bright white fan blades of its predecessor. Now, without any further delays, we're going to dive right into the installation process and see if NZXT's claim of an easier build process holds true. Now I'm going to hand this over to Poe. All right, guys. Thank you, Andrew, for the wonderful intro. Uh, we will hopefully see Andrew a little bit more going forward. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, so what I'm probably going to do in editing is fast forward it so that this isn't a 20 or 30 minute long video. Um, if there's anything very important that I need to tell you guys, I'll uh, go ahead and say that as I'm doing it and then I'll slow that portion down uh, in editing so that you can get the information. Uh, so we're going to start out by taking off the back plate. You do have to remove all of these tiny, tiny Phillips screws to get that back plate off. These are very delicate screws, so when you go to put these screws back on, it requires zero force when you're installing them. If you torque them too hard, and when I say too hard, I mean hardly at all, they will snap off. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you decide to do this mod yourself. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now that the back plate is off, we're going to go ahead and take out these uh, hex nuts or hex bolts. These are actually the same uh, fasteners that the tiny little screws screw into. Uh, once we get those off, then we'll go ahead and take off the four uh, surrounding the GPU itself. One thing that you need to keep in mind when you're taking these out is that they are very easy to get stuck in the end of your hex bit. So once you get close to having them out, go ahead and take your tool off of them and get them the rest of the way out by your finger. That way you don't end up with them stuck inside your bit. So at this point, I can already feel that the card is starting to come loose from the cooler. Uh, basically, the only thing we have left holding it on are these four screws surrounding the GPU, and then we also have our I.O. plate. So I'm going to go ahead and take the screws out of the I.O. plate next before I take the screws off around the GPU itself. Right, 
right guys, now that we've gotten all the screws out of the back uh, and taken off the I.O. plate, it is ready to separate. So this top cooler should pull off of the bottom uh, PCB. <clears throat> At first it may seem like there's still something uh, holding on to it, uh, but it is just the thermal paste that's keeping it held on at this point. So once you get it partially up, then you'll notice that there is some plugs that have to be disconnected. Uh, so let me spin this around so I can see it. Okay, we've got one here. Got that one. Now we can basically flip this cooler up on its side and take off the other one. These are a bit of a pain to get off. What you want to do is make sure that you're not pulling by the wires themselves. Uh, try your hardest to be pulling on the connector instead. There we go. All right, don't have any thermal pads stuck to me, which is a good thing. Uh, so now we can go ahead and start prepping the card for the uh, Kraken installation. Uh, and one thing you want to keep in mind is make sure you're saving all of these thermal pads. Uh, they will need to obviously go back on uh, when and if you decide to reinstall your factory cooler. probably starting to make a little bit more sense as to why the video is titled what it is. Uh, as you can see we have an ancient uh, Corsair liquid cooler. I was able to score this liquid cooler on eBay for $18 shipped. Uh, it included the Intel bracket, works perfectly fine. Uh, so we're going to try it out with this and see what kind of results we get. So we'll move this out of the way for now. I've went ahead and slid the pump into the bracket. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory how it goes in there. Uh, once it's through, you twist it and uh, it lines up and, and will keep itself in there. So let me move this out of the way. We're very happy with how the modifications turned out. We're even happier that we were able to liquid cool this 1080 Ti for less than $50. Now with that being said, this ancient Corsair cooler we used was definitely not optimal for this scenario. We found that the tubes were entirely too short and a little rigid. We would highly suggest spending a little bit more money than we did and getting one of the 30 plus coolers that NZXT boasts compatibility with the G12.
One thing that we noticed and wanted to mention is the fact that NZXT does not include a GPU fan header adapter. The fan headers on video cards are a smaller design than the ones found on your motherboard and you're unable to connect a fan or pump directly to the card without an adapter like this. Now, our guess is that NZXT meant for you to plug the fans and pump directly into your motherboard and control the speed via motherboard software. I can't say that we disagree with this as it's how we planned on running this setup, but it would be a nice addition to the kit for unexperienced builders who might not be as familiar with a modification like this. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. We appreciate you watching and hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check us out on social media and make sure to get subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you all in the next one.